the Bible says, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of man crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Does your Bible say that? Yes, it does. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Powerful word of prayer. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Come down some more, because you're already here. Increase some more, Lord. Closeness with you, Lord. Thank you for ministering to us, oh Lord God. In the song, Lord, in your scriptural reading, in the prayers, and just with the young people going forward in Christ, Lord, that encourages us to stay on the right path, Lord. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. We thank you, we worship you, we adore you, we magnify you. So come now, Holy Spirit, help us to exalt Jesus. Help us to preach your gospel. Pray that souls will be saved, lives will be changed, families will be blessed, our prayers be heard this morning. Feed your lambs and feed your sheep of life. Build us up in the holy faith, Lord. Some need healing, Lord. Some physical in their bodies. And some mental, Lord, Lord. Some spiritual, Lord. Some need comforting, Lord, bereavement. Some are in hospitals, Lord, and healing, Lord. Whatever the need is, Lord, you are divine supply. So as we are assembled in worship, Lord, come in our midst, Lord. Do your will, do your work, touch your people, bless us all. Touch us all, Lord. Hear our prayers. Now we bind the enemy, we lose your blessing, we come to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Say Thank you, Jesus. We give honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. And we thank God for the witness in the Bible that Jesus hung. He bled. He died. But on the third day, he got up from the grave. That's the gospel, that's the truth, that's the good news. We want to use as a subject title this morning, A Great Soul Winner, Discipleship 7, Amen. A Great Soul Winner, Amen. Oh, how we are enjoying our discipleship series, amen. I'm here to enjoy it, hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to look at a great soul winner on today in the Bible, look at his life and there's some things we can learn from him. Someone asked Dr. John MacArthur the question, what is Greatness. What is greatness? Greatness is a person who is designed by God, surrendered to God, and used by God. I want to look at a man who pointed people to Jesus. If you look with me at Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 1, the Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. 
Hallelujah. John the Baptist was called to preach. Amen. He was called to point people to Jesus. If I could break that down, he, he was called to be a soul winner. Amen. A fisherman for Jesus. He had many similarities with Jesus. Both their births were announced, amen. Both were set apart, amen. And, and both were even given their names by the angel Gabriel. <laughs> even before they were born, they were given names, amen. Hallelujah. If you look at me at Luke chapter 1 and verse number 13, the, the Bible says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Hallelujah. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Is that all right? Name before you got here. He also called before you even got here. Amen. Would you say neighbor, neighbor? Neighbor. You were called, you were called. before you got here. Amen. John's mother, Elizabeth, was filled with the Holy Ghost. While John was in the womb, his mother was filled with the Holy Ghost. God made the right environment for John to proclaim the gospel and to fulfill his calling. Your environment is very important, amen. And we create our own environment, hallelujah. If you look at Luke chapter 1 and verse number 41, the, the, the Bible says, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leap in her womb. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. John came here in a Holy Ghost environment. <laughs> God, Hallelujah, God made sure that John came in a spirit-filled environment. John had work to do, so he had to be in the right environment to get that work done. He said, well, what was he called to do? He was called to point people to Jesus. Your environment is very important. Would you tell three neighbors you were called to point people to Jesus? Amen. Now, 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 right now, I, I am a, I'm preaching with a microphone, and I'm, I'm preaching in the midst of an air-conditioned building, and, and I'm preaching with a ceiling here, and it looks good. I got acoustics and everything. But John preached in the wilderness. <laughs> John lived in the wilderness. He was rugged to hallelujah. And, and he was raised in the desert. Take a name a neighbor. Oh neighbor. There's something good about the 
I read one commentator and not in the notes, you know, but it struck in my spirit, it can't get out of my spirit. It said, it's strange, this man was calling folks to Jesus and telling them the king was coming. And he was doing it not in the city, but he was doing it out there in the wilderness. You don't know how God's going to work, amen. Tell three neighbors that God works in mysterious ways. God works in mysterious ways. Wonders to perform. Can I back it up? If you go to Luke chapter 1 and verse number 80, that the Bible says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1, hallelujah, verse number 80, that the Bible says, and the child grew, and the child grew, and, and waxed strong in spirit. Hallelujah. And was in the, y'all know, y'all missed it right there. And was in the deserts. Hallelujah. Until the day of his showing unto Israel. Amen. Is that all right? Is that all right? Well, help me, Holy Ghost. God made him in the desert. Hallelujah. God fashioned him in the desert. God called him in the desert. God made him a soul winner in the desert. God made him a disciple in the desert. God made him a disciple maker in the desert. Tell three neighbors and you wonder why you're in the desert. Amen. Tell three more neighbors, God does his best work in the desert, amen. He said, back it up, Elijah was in the desert, Paul was in the desert, John the Baptist was in the desert, Jesus was in the desert, tell three neighbors, and you were in the desert too. Some of y'all said, why am I not here? God's working on you. John was called by God in the desert. The word came to him in the desert. Can I back it up? Go to Luke chapter 3 and verses 2 and 3. The Bible says, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest. He's dating things right there. That's the way of dating things. The word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, where? In the wilderness. Hallelujah. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Does your Bible say that? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, and verse number two, it says, and saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means turn around. If I were to look it up in the Greek, in the Greek it means to change your mind. Can I break that down? Turn around and go in a different direction. John is saying, get ready, the Lord is coming. Christ is coming. The Messiah is coming. John has a message. He's God's messenger. And he's God's man. And if I can go into a historical context, they have not heard from God for 400 years through a prophet. 
and now finally John shows up on the scene. Not in the city, but out there in the desert. And folks are coming everywhere to hear a word from God. You know, I heard somebody say, if I be lifted up from the earth, I don't care if you are in the desert, I, I'll draw all men unto me. Watch it now. If the nation repented, then the way would be prepared for the coming of the Messiah. John tells them, if you all repent, the way will be prepared for the coming of Christ. John's message was a message of judgment. See, some folk like to tickle your ears and make you feel good and tell you what you want to hear. But John didn't do that. John told it like it was. Matter of fact, he told it so good they put him in prison. And then he got so good they took his head off. Because he was preaching the word. Israel had sinned and was sinning and needed to repent. The axe was lying at the root of the tree. And the tree represented Israel. Because if she did not bear fruit, John says, God's going to cut you down. Tell three neighbors, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. We were called to bear fruit. Can I back it up? If you look at Luke chapter 13 and, and verses 6 through 9, the, the Bible says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. To neighbor, neighbor, he didn't find anything. He found nothing. Uh, then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? You know, why are you just using up the soil? <laughs> some, some of you folks say, just occupying space. God didn't call you just here just to come and breathe, amen. You've got a job to do. To name a neighbor. You weren't called just to breathe. You've got a job to do. You weren't called just to occupy space. Talk to me, somebody. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone. This year also till I shall dig about it and dung it, with fertilize it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Can you neighbor? We're called to bear fruit. It's daytime now. Come on, brother, around silver. But the night is coming where no man can work. It's time now for us to bear fruit. You say, what kind of fruit? First, the fruit of repentance. Turn from sin and turn to God. Whenever you repent, you got to turn to something. You got to turn to God. And then you got to have the fruit of love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, 